Dumbo, Brooklyn is home to amazing New York City views and is a hotspot for tourists, but it also has some incredible food. I checked out Nina, a brand new Mediterranean restaurant, and then I went to Lucky Rabbit Noodles, an Asian-influenced spot offering some very unique food and so many other places, including some hidden gems. It's a beautiful evening here in Dumbo, Brooklyn. Right now I'm along the East River with the Lower Manhattan skyline behind me, and today I ate a hell of a lot of food. I love Dumbo, which of course is an abbreviation for what this neighborhood is truly called Down Under Manhattan Bridge Overpass. Yeah, that just rolls right off the tongue. Even though this is a very small area and it's very touristy, this neighborhood does have a lot to offer. I mean, the views here are incredible. There are some of the best skyline scenes here in all of New York City. And the food is really good as well, despite the fact that there are a lot of places that cater mainly to tourists. So I thought I'd come here today to Dumbo and go on a bit of a food crawl. But there's also only so much food I can actually eat in a day. So in addition, I'm also gonna feature some places that I've went to recently here in Dumbo. So to kick this food crawl off, let's actually turn the clock back a week where I went to a brand new restaurant for dinner and it was a very good dinner indeed. Just one block away from the iconic view of the Manhattan Bridge is Nina, a Mediterranean restaurant from Israeli chef Sagi Azarul. Now, I was invited to the establishment for dinner before it officially opened and my meal was complimentary. While I wasn't requested to make a video about my experience, I'm sure the expectation was there that it would showcase my dinner in some fashion, so I thought it was important to at least disclose this. As far as the menu, the prices are pretty reasonable, although the portions are on the smaller side, but it's a great place for sharing. To drink, I got the flowery Dumbo cocktail, which contained gin, elderflower liqueur, lemon juice, and simple syrup, and it was nice and refreshing. To eat, I started off with some good dips and bread, such as baba ganoush and tahini, along with hummus and pine nuts. I also enjoyed what the restaurant calls a mushroom cigar, which consisted of filo dough wrapped over a variety of slow-cooked mushrooms. Then I had the mahi-mahi ceviche, which was very pleasant, and also the fish kebab, which looked pretty basic but was full of flavor. My favorite dish of the evening by far was the rice bruschetta, which was toasted in butter, topped with avocado, a picante tomato salad, boiled eggs, and it was fantastic. In terms of Nina's larger offerings, I got the meatball fettuccine, which was pure comfort food. The meatballs are kebab-style beef, and I was surprised with how small they were. It seems like these days, meatballs are getting to be the size of baseballs, and I really appreciated the subdued size. To finish things off, I got the crumbled cheesecake, which was so light and creamy, it was a nice way to end a very pleasant meal. Yeah, Nina is for sure a great addition to the neighborhood, but right now, I gotta think of food for today. I made my way to the restaurant Bread and Spread, a small sandwich shop that goes far beyond the typical deli offerings. As the restaurant claims, everything is roasted and toasted. I got the Porchetta Sandwich, which contains pork belly, red onions, arugula, a red pepper spread, and aged provolone. It was absolutely delicious. The pork was nice, warm, and juicy, while the other components on the sandwich perfectly complemented the meat. The bread was nice and fresh, but it wasn't the largest offering, which wasn't bad since I planned on eating a lot more food elsewhere. Regardless, I really enjoyed my sandwich, although it would have been nice if there was at least some music playing in the restaurant because it just felt a little too quiet for me. That was a really good, satisfying sandwich. I really enjoyed that, but still hungry. Luckily, I know just the place. I headed to Lucky Rabbit Noodles, which is tucked away right next to the Manhattan Bridge. It's sort of a Chinese restaurant, but it's clearly not one that aspires to be authentic or traditional. Chef and owner Jeremy Dean in an Eater New York article said, I stay away from authentic. I stay away from traditional. It's just food, man. It's good food. Indeed, I think it's definitely good food. During my first visit to the establishment, I got one of their signature dishes, the beef and nudes, which was inspired by Taiwanese beef noodle soup. At $22, it's a bit costly compared to the offerings one would find on the other side of the bridge in Chinatown, but I loved it. It was one of the best noodle dishes I had over the course of the year. The beef brisket was so tender, rich, and succulent. It was incredible. For my latest visit, I went with the Masman curry dumplings, which consisted of lemongrass chicken dumplings smothered in a coconut curry sauce and topped with fried shallots, cilantro, scallions, and ginger. 
The dumplings by themselves were well done, but they were taken to another level with the flavor-packed masmam curry. I really enjoyed them. It was really good, but right now my priorities are something sweet, caffeine, possibly beer, but I think caffeine is the most important thing, so I'm gonna address that first. I headed to Bee Public, a coffee shop that has a pretty nice atmosphere. In addition to serving coffee, the establishment offers beer, wine, and cocktails. I decided to go with an espresso and it hit the spot. I also like the fact that my beverage was accompanied by a glass of sparkling water. I really appreciate when cafes do this. Sparkling water or seltzer makes for a fantastic palate cleanser. I also managed to do some reading. My book was Winners Take All, The Elite Charade of Changing the World. The book is filled with many compelling and thought-provoking ideas, and while I felt it was a bit too cynical at points, it was still worth reading. Oh, that hit the spot. Coffee, espresso, caffeine, it's just the greatest thing in the world, but now I need something sweet, so uh, onwards to a nice treat. While I planned to first get something sweet, I realized that I was closer to establishments that offered beer. Unfortunately, the brew pub I wanted to go to, Randolph Beer, was closed that day. As an alternative, I went to the Evil Twin Brewing Tap Room. I've been there before and enjoyed it. The tap room offers a pretty wide selection of beer available in various sizes and price points. They're also pretty well known for the fact that their beverages have some very unique names. For instance, the triple IPA I ordered was called We All Know That Baby Yoda Balloon Will Once Again Steal The Show At The Big Thanksgiving Day Parade This Year. Yeah, that was a mouthful, but I definitely enjoyed my beer. It was an absolute punch in the face of hops, and it was pretty strong since it contained a 10.4% alcohol content. Now, I would have loved to have tried more beer, but I had other places to be. You know, I thought I'd get a dessert or something sweet first, but uh, you know, that tap room is on the way, so I thought, well, it's convenient, but now, now I'm gonna get something sweet. But that beer did hit the spot though, that was good. For dessert, I wanted to go to Omandine Bakery, which offers French bread and pastries, but unfortunately, it was closed. Across the street, however, is Jacques Therese Chocolate, which is a spot that's famous for their chocolate, but also their cookies, which I've enjoyed on a number of occasions. While a cookie would have been nice, I had a taste for something else. Despite the cold weather, I wanted ice cream. Fortunately, there are some decent places for ice cream in the area. Previously, there was an Ample Hills Creamery located in the historic Fulton Ferry Fireboat House. Unfortunately, it's no longer there, but thankfully it was replaced with a Van Leeuwen, and there are luckily other Ample Hills locations still in operation. I'm definitely a fan of Van Leeuwen. I love how they've created some very unique flavors, like the time they offered malted milkshake and fries ice cream, which I enjoyed. I also really appreciated the collaboration Van Leeuwen did with Chef Chintan Pandya of Unapologetic Foods, which is the restaurant group that introduced establishments like the Michelin star to Sema and the highly regarded Damaka to New York City. The collab produced a Thondai flavored ice cream, which is based off a sweet and fragrant Indian beverage, and I loved it. However, there are tons of Van Leeuwens in New York City, so I wanted to check out some place that I haven't been to, so I went to the Brooklyn Ice Cream Factory. The menu is a bit limited and somewhat costly, nevertheless, I got a single scoop with the butter pecan and it was good. So the ice cream is pretty solid. I got butter pecan, nice and smooth, good flavor, good balance, good consistency and texture. I like it. Although I wish they had more exciting flavors. I mean, they've got like the standard ice cream offerings, which is fine, but you know, I like the crazy stuff. But still, this place was nice to try, and like I said, I'm enjoying my ice cream. After finishing my ice cream, I went to what is without a doubt the most popular place to eat in Dumbo, the Time Out Market Food Hall. I pretty much go there every time I'm in the neighborhood, not necessarily for the food, but to take advantage of their washroom. However, the food hall is host to a number of great options. Although, I try to stay away from the restaurants that have multiple locations since I would rather go to the original establishments as opposed to their food hall outpost, which are usually a bit limited in their offerings. Instead, I try to go to some of the more unique restaurants. One that I've enjoyed recently is Bark Barbecue, which combines Dominican flavors with Texas-style barbecue techniques. On my last visit, I had their brisket, and it was excellent. 
However, depending on when one goes to bark, the lines and waits can be pretty long. One of the most frustrating aspects of the food hall is that there's just not enough seating. During peak times, it can get very crowded, although I do like taking my food outside when it's warm and enjoying the spectacular views. And speaking of views, the top level of the food hall has some good ones. Of course, everyone comes to this top level for the food, but the views, now those are worth seeing as well. This is amazing. Ah, so that was a very pleasant day here on Devil. All that food I had was really good. I had a great time today. Although that ice cream, I'm feeling a little cold now. I feel like I need another round of coffee. One to drink and one to like, you know, warm my hands, but uh, it was worth it. However, I do feel like I should have actually come here on a different day of the week because unfortunately, some of the spots I wanted to go to were sadly closed, like that uh, Randolph beer. Still, I did find good alternatives and I had a great day regardless. But now I should be heading home. I've got a big day tomorrow and I've got a bit of a journey ahead of me. I plan on actually walking across the Brooklyn Bridge and hopping on the subway in Manhattan. So yeah, it's gonna take a little time. In summation, I had a great day here in Dumbo. I definitely had a lot of good food and beverages. This neighborhood has a lot more to offer than just some nice views and the timeout market. I will certainly be back to Dumbo for more food adventures.